Oh, shucks, Mom, thanks. Um, so hi, my name is Christian Jenko, and in the next 45 minutes, I would like to teach all of you how to go to college for free. So here's a basic outline of what we're going to talk about. First, uh, I think every speech should, t should uh, start with justification for why you're listening to the person at the front of the room. Uh, so I'm going to talk about why you should listen to me. Second, I'm going to say why go to college. I think it's very important to have a clear understanding of why you want this thing that you're now going to get for free. Uh, third, kind of rephrasing it, I'm going to teach you how to make colleges want you, what the keys and the, and the successes are and the little tricks to really maximize your college potential. Um, and then lastly, I'm going to teach you how to hack the system, how to do all the extra little things that no one tells you uh, to really maximize everything. So firstly, why listen to me? So this is, <laughs> this is kind of a, an outline of what colleges would have seen from me when I graduated college. Uh, I graduated CHS in Southlake in 2009 with a 101.0000 GPA. <laughs> um, that's not a typo. It, it was rounded to four zeros, which I thought was really cool. Um, I got 2280 on the SAT and 33 on the ACT. I got fives in AP Biochem, Physics, and English Comp, and fours in English Lit, Psychology, AP US History, Econ, and Calculus. Uh, I was also extracurricularly a, uh, a Green Jacket Student Ambassador. This is I'm not sure what the analog is, is at this school, but they kind of go around to games and stuff and wear fancy suits. That's why I joined. It was kind of cool. Um, I, I won the Best Actor of 2008 uh, in the Thespian Society. I won several ACM coding competitions for programming. Uh, and I produced and directed a film against drunk driving called Game Over. So well-roundedness in, in general is what I was trying to show colleges. Uh, the most impressive thing I think I did out of college or out of high school was uh, I was offered a little over $2.3 million in combined scholarship money from uh, 36 different universities. Here's a list of them. Uh, I ended up accepting the one worth the most amount of money from Southern Methodist University. Uh, you can write down all the names of these colleges and scholarships and stop. Uh, <laughs> the SMU President Scholarship uh, was fantastic. At the time that I was offered it, it was worth about $180,000. Over the course of four years and tuition increases and everything, uh, it ended up being worth about $210,000. So every time I got in the mail, oh, tuition has increased, I was like, this is pretty cool. <laughs> My scholarship is now worth a little bit more. Um, so this, uh, apart from just tuition, it covered all student fees, all room and board, uh, study abroad for tuition and travel for two semesters, uh, Taos weekend vacations every year with other people from the same scholarship, because why not? <laughs> we'll just send you out for a weekend. Uh, total, over all four years, I spent about $10,000, which is considerably less than I would have spent even living at home uh, that my parents would have spent on me. Uh, and I majored with computer science uh, with a pre-medical specialization. In addition to this stuff that I did in college, I did a lot of extracurriculars. I was on Student Senate, uh, kind of doing what you guys just did with the meeting and the minutes and Robert's Rules of Order. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I did ethnic hand drumming just for fun. Uh, I'm a member of the Mile High Club along with my fiance, uh, which is you climb a mile vertically on the rock wall. Um, I did modern dance. I did ballroom dancing. Here's my fiance again, uh, competitively, which was a lot of fun. This is. Uh, So this, is, this was a project I did uh, for the SMU talent show that ended up uh, getting me calls from like The Tonight Show and Good Morning Texas. Uh, I'm, I'm eating fruit, and as I eat the fruit, it's playing a song. There's a, a video of it on my website. Um, I also gave a TED lecture. I got to meet a ton of interesting people through this. I still get people calling me from like Venezuela and all these crazy places saying, hey, I watched your talk about why you should learn to program, and it's really cool, and you inspired me. Um, so cool. Uh, through study abroad, I went to all of the places that there's a blue dot, which is a lot of places. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go through rapid fire. It was Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong, uh, Sydney, Bali, uh, Perth. Uh, this, is, this, is in, uh, this is in Sydney in the Blue Mountains, more Sydney. Uh, Oxford, I got to see, I was there actually the summer that the Olympics was, which was super cool. Um, and because my fiance had the same scholarship that I had, I got to travel the world with her, completely paid for by SMU. Uh, it was super, super cool. Uh, in addition, I, I got to meet two of my idols. This is Jill Bolte Taylor on the left. She gave a fantastic TED talk called A Stroke of Insight. I got to meet her and like shake her hand and introduce myself to her. And then on the right, you may recognize Neil deGrasse Tyson from the Cosmo series. I had like a discussion with him <laughs> that I, I recorded it. It's, it's one of my most prized digital possessions. Um, and he, he talked to me and he, he like said my name. It was, it was wild. Um, post grad, after graduating, so between my fiance and I, we have zero dollars in debt. We, we are starting now at zero, which is about 
close to a half a million dollars ahead of most of the people that we graduated with. Um, I was accepted to, to several Texas medical schools. Medical school was kind of the plan all along. Um, I ended up foregoing that. Uh, medicine, medicine is, uh, it, it's, not, it's not the lifestyle I was going after. My dad is actually a physician. He works at uh, EMC. He's the medical director there in North Richland Hills. And he, he works really hard. Um, and I, having the technical background, there were, there were more enjoyable fields open to me. So I'm, I'm doing what I like to call uh, like internet entrepreneurship, which is working out really well. I have internet businesses. And like over the course of this talk, I'm probably going to get an email that someone has sent me money for something that I've made. It's, it's really cool. Um, one of the things is, uh, shameless personal plug, dbinbox.com. It lets you receive files that are too big to send over email if you have a website or something. All right. So... That is, that's kind of what you get if you follow the steps that I'm about to show you. You get to go to college for free and life kind of just becomes a lot easier. Um, it's not easy, it's simple, but it's hard work. Um, but it's ultimately very much worth it in the end. So with that said, let's get started. I read a book that was very formative for me last year called How to Get Rich by Felix Dennis. He just died recently, but he was one of the richest people in the world. He was a, a media mogul. He owned probably half the magazines that exist. And one of the most interesting things about this book titled How to Get Rich is that he's very strongly encouraging you not to get rich, saying that it's not actually worth it, that what you're after, happiness and success and, and you know, relationships – you can get much easier through other ways. Money is not the solution to everything. So in this book, How to Get Rich, he tries to convince you not to get rich, which I thought was very interesting. But you know, ultimately, he's trying to, to get you to understand what you want before then saying, here are the steps that you can get it. We have a misconception in the United States that everyone needs to go to college, which is very true if you're playing this board game <laughs> called The Game of Life. I've run simulations. It is statistically extremely improbable to win this game if you do not go to college. So if you're playing life, the game in all uppercase, go to college. But that's not necessarily true of real life. There's kind of this plan that everyone has in their head of, okay, well, you have middle school and then high school, then college, then internship. You get the internship so you can get a job and then get married, et cetera, et cetera. You pay off all your loans and you save money for your kid's college, and then you can retire and die in Florida with a bunch of ugly old people. Um, <laughs> that's kind of the plan. That's what everyone does. That's, that's what's in your head of why college is the next step after high school. Um, and if you ask someone, well, why are you going to college? Have you sat down and thought about why is it that you're taking this huge four-year investment and taking on all these student loans? They'll give you, in general, about four different answers. The first is to make money and be successful, quite obviously, because if you go to college, you have the world open to you now, and you can get any job you want, and it's, it's great and fantastic. Uh, the second is to prepare for a higher career, so things like medicine or law, uh, things that need uh, a higher degree after college. The third, of course, is to learn. We go to school to learn more about school stuff. And we went to high school to learn, and now we go to college to learn. The last is to get the college experience, so to kind of make the friends and make the connections that you need to be successful throughout the rest of your life. Uh, and the last that you hear probably least often, disappointingly, is uh, to pursue research. So kind of the, the graduate thing of that you're going to go and make the world a better place through research. So let's uh, go through these one by one. Making money and being more successful. Now, it's certainly true that you make money, more money on average after graduating college than you do after only graduating high school. The average high school graduate makes about $30,000 a year or about $15 an hour. Quick trick rule of thumb, if you see a, a yearly salary, divide it by two and take off three zeros and that's about how much you make per hour. Um, really cool trick. <laughs> you can impress people a lot like, oh yes, 60,000, that's $30 an hour. Um, if you graduate college, if you go through the next stage, you make about $45,000 a year or about $22 an hour. This is, over the course of 10 years, a huge amount, $150,000 more on average if you go to college versus if you don't go to college. Seems like a no-brainer. Of course, $150,000 for that sounds like a great deal. However, what's interesting is that the average plumber, not a glorious career, the average plumber makes $52,000 a year, or about $26.50 an hour. Over the course of 10 years of being a plumber, if plumbing is something that you enjoy, you make $76,000 more than the average college graduate. 
and $230,000 more than the average high school graduate. And plumbing can be kind of fun. I've played a game about it. It's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> um, but I know what you're thinking. Okay, well, you know, I'm not going to be the average college graduate. I'm going to go and be a doctor or a lawyer or something else, which is certainly true. So if you're pursuing one of these higher careers and you know you're dead set, I want to be a doctor. That's my one true calling in life. You need to go to college. That's, that's very true. In fact, if you rank uh, the, the average earning of different undergraduate majors, petroleum engineering, if you want to be a petroleum engineer, if that, if that excites you, if that really gets you going, absolutely go to college. The average petroleum engineer, after a few years of working in the workplace, can make $150,000 a year. What would that be per hour? 75, 75, very good. Um, same thing of most engineering disciplines. Uh, so, you know, nuclear engineering, chemical engineering, aerospace engineering, computer science, which is what I graduated with. It's pretty cool. Um, mechanical engineering. But on the flip side of that, those people going to college spent exactly the same amount as people ma majoring in sports management, education, animal sciences, social science, uh, theology, music, culinary arts, exercise science, horticulture, biological studies, special education, human development, athletic training, social work, elementary education, and child and family studies who make less than the average high school graduate. They paid the same amount, they had the same four years of their life that they could have spent in the workforce taken away, but they're making comparably nothing. So. If you have a very clear mindset of what you would like to do and you know that, that one of these higher careers is for you, yes, absolutely, no question, go to college. But if you don't know, and I'll, I'll touch on this later, college may not be the right decision for you. Um, this is a, a great statistic. Uh, it's it's kind of complicated in these graphs, but all you need to know is that less than a third of college graduates end up working in a field that's related to their degree. So you spend four years really tailoring your expertise and, and really specializing and honing in on one skill, there's a two-thirds chance that you're going to be doing something completely unrelated to the thing that you spent hundreds of thousands of dollars specializing in. Um, and that's a bad idea. Uh, on, the, on the flip side, so if, if you're interested in college purely from the financial standpoint because you want to make more money, the best way to make a lot of money is to start your own business. Uh, my, my, fian my fiance is right back here, by the way. Say, say hi. She, she gave me, come on, this is for me. Um, so we, we, uh, we bought a, a washer and dryer for our new apartment the other day. And a uh, huge, big machine. You have to lug it up the staircase. So uh, Alyssa called a moving company that she found, this, this Texas Cowboys place. Um, fantastic guy. You know, I, I met the guy that's in charge of it. And we got to talking. Found out that this guy owns the company. And he's the guy who came out to do it. And I, I was kind of probing and asking him. He didn't go to college, so he, he had no debt. And I asked him, well, you know, how much, how much are you making per year? This one guy in charge of his company is making $250,000 a year with no college degree. He had no debt. I was asking him, you know, would you recommend this for people just out of high school that are kind of getting started? And he said, absolutely. It's, it costs $5,000 to get started. You buy the truck and you get out there and, you, you know, you're reputable and you, you can make tons of money. Um, but he's making this money. You know, if, if he had gone to work for someone else as a mover, that'd be a pretty awful career. But he's, he loves it. He has total freedom. He can take off whenever he wants. He's making more money than you know, a, a good percentage of college graduates, uh, and he has absolutely no debt. So if plumbing or moving is not your thing, uh, I'd like to introduce a different opportunity. Peter Thiel, who's famous for uh, co-founding PayPal, he's a, a trillionaire entrepreneur in Silicon Valley, will pay bright high school graduates $100,000 to not go to college and start their own companies. I met some of these kids. They're, they're bright kids, but they're not like the brightest kids. I've met a few people in this room who are brighter than the kids who have won this $100,000 deal. Um, so if, if something like that is interesting to you, if you would really like to make money or you would really like to change the world with some business venture, please consider doing that instead of going to college. Uh, the next reason is to learn or to motivate learning. This is, this is an absolutely horrible reason to go to college. It used to be that college was the only place that you could get this higher level of learning, that you, you had to go to this monastery and study there for four years, and that's where they had all the books, and the books were where all the smart people had written down all their things. 
but that's not true anymore. <laughs> we have the internet. We have Khan Academy and Coursera and Wikipedia, places where I, I was watching my peers in college who would go to lecture that they had paid through the nose for, and then they would go on Khan Academy to like actually learn it, because <laughs> they could learn it better on Khan Academy than they could sitting in a class that they had paid for. Um, this, I think, is really the future of education, but that's, that's for a different talk. Um, Learning by doing also makes you much more competitive in the workplace. As a small business owner, if I were looking for someone to do accounting, I would much rather have someone that had spent two years doing accounting, who had maybe started a lemonade stand and had managed the accounting for it and had done their own taxes with TurboTax and had kind of understood the, the logistics of how to move money and, and what taxes you need to pay. Then I would for someone who had just graduated college and had no work experience but had paid through the nose for their fancy accounting degree. Um, the, the former person is much more valuable to a business. Um, lastly, college is, is really expensive motivation to learn. If you're going to college because you feel like, ah, you know, all the Khan Academy stuff sounds interesting, but if you just left me to my own devices, I, I wouldn't actually do any of that. Um, paying to go to college is a really, really bad way to motivate yourself to do that. In fact, if you need that motivation, you can pay me to stand behind you. I'll charge you $100 an hour. You'll pay much less over the four years than you would have. Um, and any time I see you not working, I'll, I'll like throw water on you or something. Um, and, and you'll be motivated to go and learn, and, and you won't spend as much money, and I'll get some money too. It's a win-win. It's great. Um, the last is, uh, or sorry, the second to last is to meet people or for the college experience. Again, this is a really expensive way to socialize. This, I think... Kind of alluding to, to a talk that I'm working on, uh, the future of education, I think, is, is this MOOC thing of learning online and getting all your resources independently and going along that track. Um, there's, not a clear Excuse me. there's not a clear solution to solving the, the networking problem, but it's going to happen. Um, a clear solution that would be worthwhile is if you just threw a really fancy party every month for like $20,000, you'd be ahead over the course of four years, and you'd make a lot of friends through your fancy, crazy parties. Um, you'd be like Gatsby or something. Uh, the last reason is for research. Research is a really good reason to go to college. If doing research is something that excites you, universities are a fantastic place to do research, but you really have to take advantage of it, and you have to go after it. I'll give you a, a quick illustration of this. This is from a, a webcomic, and I said it at the end. This is all of human knowledge represented in the circle. This is what you learn in elementary school, and then to high school, you kind of learn generally from the basics and then, and then go out in all directions. In college, you get a ba uh, bachelor's degree. You start to specialize a little bit. Then you get your master's. You specialize more. And then you do some research papers. So you're really pushing the forefront of, of what is known in humanity. And then once you focus and you really get there to the boundary of human education, um, of what is known, you can spend your life pushing that boundary just a little bit and increase what is known about all of human existence, and that little boundary push is called a PhD. If that excites you, your world is going to look like this, but you'll, you'll be doing great strides for humanity. So if that's something that, that excites you that you're interested in, absolutely, college is a great place for you. Here are some super bad reasons to go to college that I heard from my friends that were in college. SMU tuition, by the way, is it's around $210,000. So these were people paying $210,000 in order to do the following. I need to figure out what I'm doing with my life. No, that's, that's an awful reason to go to college. Please take a year off. G gap year is much more common uh, in, in places like Australia and, um, and the UK. It's, it's almost stigmatized in the US, but it shouldn't be. You know, that, that year after high school is a great formative year to kind of expand and look for things that you're interested in and, and things that excite you and maybe do some internships and you know, maybe spend two weeks working with a plumber and see if that's something that you might enjoy. Um, that's what all my friends are doing. In your life, you can't always just do what all your friends are doing. You have to make your own choices and, and do your own thing. And, you know, this is a really expensive going with the curve thing. Um, don't, don't go to college because you want to do what your friends are doing. Um, if, if, you're, if you're kind of flirting with the idea of, yeah, medicine sounds like fun and I'm at the top of my class and, you know, all the other people at the top of my class are going into medicine or, or law or whatever. So, you know, I, I guess I'll just do that. No, that's, that's an awful reason to go to college. What I've seen time and time again is all these pre-med students or pre-law students coming into their undergraduate career and they take maybe intro to biology and they do okay and then they take intro to chemistry and they do okay and then they take organic chemistry and they fail. 
And this is like the end of their sophomore year, and all of the classes that they took are working towards their pre-med degree so that they can take the MCAT. And they realize, you know, I don't really think medicine's for me. This is kind of hard. I think I'm going to do accounting or something completely unrelated. No, do that thinking before you enter college. Take a, take a year and, and figure out what it is you actually want to do. Um, because my parents told me to, I know as, there's a lot of parents in the room, um, so I'm not, I'm not saying necessarily don't do what your parents tell you to do, but if that is the only reason that you're going to college, that's a bad reason to go to college. Um, you really need your own justification and your own personal reasons for wanting to pursue this higher degree. Uh, because I'm the smartest class and that's what smartest people do. I, I alluded to this before. Um, I'd like to make the argument that, that college is largely a waste of money. And this is if, if you pay full tuition. And this is, I'm, I'm borrowing a lot of ideas from Peter Thiel, who I mentioned before. The average cost of tuition for a public university is $22,000 a year, or for a private university, $43,000 a year. Multiplied over the four years, plus room and board, which is an average of about $9,000, plus textbooks, which is $1,200,000 per, per semester, I'm sorry, per year, uh, times the four years, is $128,800 for a public university. If you want to go private like Southern Methodist University was, it's $212,000. So SMU is right around there. So let's call it even. Public university, $130,000. If I gave you $130,000 in cash right now, I have it stashed behind the projector, we can go get it, and offered it to you, would the best use of it for you personally be to spend it going to college? Let me give you a really easy alternative of something, something else you could do. If you invest it in a full index mutual fund, one of the safest places you can invest money, over the course of 10 years, so you, know, you graduate high school, you put this money in 10 years later, your money is going to double. And you'll have a passive income from the 4% the rule of $10,400 per year of just passive income, just money that flows into your pocket. No effort on your part. You could sit on the couch all day and watch... Desperate Housewives, is that a show anymore? <laughs> Do people watch that? Um, you're still going to get your check you know, once a month for, for 10400 divided by uh, 12, which is $866. There's a financial blogger called Mr. Money Mustache who I've, I've become fascinated with. He retired, him and his wife uh, and his one child, he retired for $20,000 a year. So if you were working during those 10 years, you can retire 10 years after going to high school. If you live frugally... You, you, can, you can finish. So, you know, the life of that plumber that goes off after high school and starts working as a plumber doesn't look so bad. He can, he can retire 10 years after starting working. Um, flip side of that, kind of looking at it from if you do go to college, $130,000 over every day that you go to class. Oops. Ah, oh, my joke is ruined. It's okay. Pretend you didn't see that. Um, $130,000, if you look at that uh, over the course of your entire uh, career, uh, Every day when you wake up, it's going to be about four dollars dollars bills, so about $200 every day. You go to, a, let's, let's call it an average of about four classes. So before all of your classes, you take out one of those $50 bills and you hand it to your professor and you have 50 minutes to enjoy what your $50 has paid for. Contrary to popular belief, I know that the popular thing to say in high school is that, oh, the college classes are so much harder and you learn so much more. They're not that different, especially if you take AP classes, the, the content's about the same. The freedom's different. The... the the biggest difference is just that you have kind of more time. Uh, you don't have to worry about a lot more stuff. So consider in high school, if you were paying for high school, if you didn't go to a public school, um, and you were paying at the rate of a, uh, of, a, of a college course, how many of your classes that you're taking in high school right now are worth $50 a lecture? For comparison... <laughs> $50 will buy you front row seats at a Miley Cyrus concert that is four hours long. So kind of equate that amount of joy and, and the value that you get from that. Um, thank you all. You, you pretended very well. <laughs> what I see so often, though, is people doing this in class that they just paid $50 for. They're, they don't go, and they, they kind of just study the night before the test, and you kind of scrape by, and you're cramming for it before... But this is not the attitude you should be having towards high school or college classes. You should be as excited about college classes as my brother Justin is about Minecraft. <laughs> Justin Jenko is a savant at Minecraft, and I do not use that word lightly. There are, there are these intricate games that you play. It's called Mineplex, is that right? Yeah. 
where there's these mob characters and you have to, and there's balancing issues for all of them and there's ins and outs of, okay, well, this one can counterattack this one in this way, but this one has this amount of health points if you attack in this way. This kid knows all of it. He knows every single detail of every single transaction. If I offered Justin right now the opportunity to go into a room with 20 other people who were just as fanatical about Minecraft as he was, with an expert at the front of the room who could tell him over the course of his years of playing Minecraft, the fantastic, you know, ins and outs and the tricks and the mechanics of it so that Justin could learn Minecraft that much better. Absolutely, that's a no-brainer. Yeah, Justin, you would do that. That's, that's a great idea. Um, but think about, like, biology. People don't really have this attitude towards biology, but biology is incredible. It's the science of life. We've figured out how life works, like worms and toads and trees. We, we like, figured it out. We can make artificial life. Pokemon! We're like at the cusp of actually having Pokemon. <laughs> if you really love biology, you could be the person that like makes Pokemon a thing. That would be so cool. And you can, you know, when you go to college, you can go in a room of people who really want to make Pokemon happen. And then you can spend, you know, a semester learning about how to make artificial life forms that are Pokemon. That'd be so cool. Um, so all of this to say, you need a good reason to want to go to college. If after all of this, you have your reason set in stone and you say, yes, you know, I, I've listened to everything you have to say and college definitely is for me. This is how to go for free. <clears throat> Excuse me one second. <clears throat> if you can convince a university that you are the type of person that would be happy and successful even if they did not go to colleges, Colleges will pay you money to go there. And it's very simple, the, the mechanics and the, and the rationale that they use to decide who they're going to give money to and who they don't. First of all, I'm, I'm talking about academic scholarships. These are, these are the way to go. Um, it's not like a sports scholarship where you're, you're a slave to the sports team and you have to go every other weekend and you have no time to do anything else. Um, this is that they're, they're paying you just to go to class and keep up your GPA. <coughs> um, so the... the Quali the, the criteria that they're looking for are four things. The first is curriculum and GPA, so what classes you took in high school and how high your GPA was, that you took challenging classes and that you did well in them. The second is test scores, because one school could be giving their kids inflated grades than the other, so you want to have some way of standardizing it. Um, this includes the SAT, the ACT, and AP tests. SAT and ACT are about the same. AP tests are extra. You want to take as many of those as you can. Um, and then there's subjective stuff. This is stuff like leadership activities, so, you know, debate, band, cheer, and sports, and your essay. So let's talk about how to really maximize all of this. I was on the scholarship committee for three years for the people actually deciding who gets the cut and who, who gets the big money for the, for the president's scholarship. Uh, and this is, it's, it's way too blurry to see, which is actually on purpose, but this is the sheet that you're given. This is a person who you're evaluating yes or no, should this person get $200,000 over the next four years to come to our school. And this is really the only box that you look at. It has a box that rates on SMU's own scale how hard their curriculum was on a scale of 0 to 5, what their GPA was on a scale of 0 to 5. They reweight it from what your school does. Um, what their subjective things are. So it doesn't really matter if you did band or you did football or you did theater. I did theater, by the way, so this was, this was cool. It was like uh, back in my, my high school days. Um, and then they give you an overall score, which is just kind of averaging all of them together. So this person got a perfect score on all of them, which actually isn't that difficult if you, if you follow what I'm about to show you. Um, so let's break all of those down. The first, curriculum and GPA. How do you maximize that, and how do you get colleges to want you? If you're the type of person that values 50 minutes of lecture more than a four-hour Miley Cyrus concert, which Miley Cyrus is pretty cool being in the front row there, um, this should be a no-brainer. If you apply yourself and you really like the classes that you're in and you, you know, you're not just cramming the night before the test, it's, it's, not, it's not complicated to do well in school. It's not easy. It's difficult. You have to, you have to kind of apply yourself and do stuff. Um, but if you, if you just kind of follow the mantra of taking challenging classes and doing well in them, you can check off this box. I have a, a, a parent came up to me last year and asked, you know, my daughter is thinking about... Uh, She's, she's trying to decide between either taking the regular class and getting an A in it or taking the AP class, and she probably won't do as well in it. She'll maybe get a B. Um, what would you recommend? What should she do? And the correct answer is 
take the AP class and get an A in it. Um, <laughs> I'll get into kind of the, the mechanics of which one's actually better later. But, you know, if colleges want to see that you are the type of person that enjoys taking these classes and enjoys excelling in them. So take the challenging classes and then apply yourself and do well in them. Um, learn not just kind of to check off the box, but learn because you love learning. Don't look at something as, I have to study this for the test. Look at biology as, I am working towards making Pokemon. <laughs> this is going to happen. Like, I'm going to be the person. Um, or w whatever it is that you're passionate about. Find that thing um, and, and make that the, the game. Um, don't swipe class rank. It's not a huge deal. It, it varies between high schools. It's more important to kind of get the more holistic score. Um, let's talk about test scores. Test scores, if you look at the amount of effort applied, test scores are equated, or test scores are weighted more than your GPA was. So if you have maybe not as good of a GPA because you didn't follow my advice and you spent too much time playing Minecraft or something when you should have been studying for your test, uh, the way to get the most bang for your buck is to really nail your standardized tests. Uh, this is over, you know, looking at where the most effort is most effective, this is the place to apply it. Pour as much time into this as you possibly can. Um, <laughs> One of the main reasons is uh, these four letters, or sorry, these five letters underneath PSIT, it's N-M-S-Q-T. How many people in this room know what that stands for? We have two, three, four, four, five. I know you do, Mom. Um, six, maybe? Okay, so, so like, let's say less than 10 out of all of us. That's really bad. <laughs> I'm going to tell you all right now, because this is, this is a secret that no one tells you, but you should know. N-M-S-Q-T stands for National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test. National Merit Scholarship Qualify, what's that? The National Merit Scholarship is an automatic scholarship that almost every college in the nation just gives you free money for. At SMU, it was $5,000 a year that they would have given me on top of my regular scholarship. Anyone who just does, does well on this test, and there's like an essay you have to fill out after you get the, the qualifying score, you just get free money from everyone. $5,000 a year, that's like a lot. Um, this is the, the cutoffs for the last few years, uh, 2016, 2015, 2019. Uh, it's kind of hovering around there. The year that I took the test, the cutoff was a 215. The year that I took the test, I got a 214. <laughs> <laughs> I lost $20,000 because I got probably like one question wrong. I wake up some mornings in a cold sweat like, ah, oh, the PSAT, oh, $20,000, I lost it again. Um, don't, don't do that. <laughs> Learn from my mistake. Here's how you do really well on the PSAT. First of all, buy this book. This is step zero. Uh, this, not necessarily this book. Just get a bunch of practice tests. This book, it's, it's like... $5 on Amazon, and it's 12 practice tests for the SAT. The SAT and the PSAT are like the same test. The PSAT is just shorter. Um, so here's what you do. You buy that book. You take the first practice test from that book. After you're done, you check the questions that you got wrong, so 